going in on the left there, then the three cables on the right go to each of these three amps, the Vox, the old Fender and the Fender Twin on the right. So my signal comes out of all three. And I imagine what we'll do, what it does mean is if we don't like the sound of one for some reason, or, or even two, we can just use the one we most like for a particular track. What's more likely is we might just use all three, but spread them around to give us that, that spatial sound that we want. Um, we're also doing a fair bit of reamping because on the demos at home I record often with this amp in the middle of the little tweed fender and I'd get a really weird sound but then I'd really mess with it so I'd time stretch it or put it in a different and so it wouldn't sound really quite like a guitar anymore, it would sound like a simple process. There's no point in trying to do all those steps again here. Right. So what we'll do is take the cleanest version of that messed up DI'd guitar or guitar's already been through an amp and then put it through the amps again right. to get a uh, spatial recording of it. Great, one more time. That's pretty good. One last time, just a bit of a tune. You might have to tune the, uh, as in auto-tune the D at the bottom. Though the out-tune this might be good, we'll see. The other thing is, in certain parts in the film, I'll be adding feedback, um, possibly to as a, as a fake for what you know. So you see the band on stage, and we don't quite have a good recording of the feedback of the band. Okay. Bit so you're actually going to be recording well, just, little just, bits and pieces that might yeah, get used texturally to like foley or um, wild tracks. So yeah, just bits of. I might even do that with drums as well. Because you see them in the rehearsal room, and we've got footage, but we don't really have audio sometimes. So I might need to just do a little. You know, uh, little simple things. It sounds like the end of a song or, or whatever. This this kind of thing. Right. It, and nothing has been filmed for this film at all, as far as I understand it. There's lots of audio recording. Okay. But it's all archived. So in some cases, you've got a camcorder or something, but the audio is unusable. Or we're going to be recording stuff here, which is yeah, going to blur, blur bend over those lines a bit. It's never playing on top of their songs. It's more when they finish the song. Right, to cut, like topping and tailing yeah, sequences and to make it fit. Yeah, their instruments on the amps. And you can't hear it, and you want to do things dramatically. Yeah, okay. that's it. Or, or, yeah, we might want to put that in a different key so it blends into the next song or whatever. Yeah. The, the, the few little things like that. So quite often I do that with score. I'm quite sort of anal about that. I very often try and make the score cues I write in the same key as what is ever going to be following it. Or coming out of it and the score is quite playful with the track so often it builds up and um, there's one point where um, we talk about Owen Morris doing a mix um, of uh, Rock and Roll Star and saying how great his mix was and just before his talk is bigging him up and the music is my score is building up in the key of B major up to the first chord which is B major of that mix that he's done so very often I'm sort of scoring the music in a weird way. Obviously mm. the centre, the, the star of the show is Oasis of Music, but I'm just trying to sort of tell the story of it and complement yeah. it as much as possible. Sweet. Yeah, that second um, second entry was a bar early then. Could, like some slap delay on it or something. <laughs>